yeah. Okay, we are heading 90 degrees. So, let's see, turn on GPS. Auto width, the cedar, 14.76 feet, I guess. Set heading 90. And we are set. So, because of the way this cedar works and its width. more inclined to run alternate rows if I had the double width the double width might work but it also trails quite a long way behind the tractor so we turn around line up again activate the GPS and doing this by without GPS is very very difficult because I'm always going to have interlap overlap so I'm not going to be able to uh, eyeball the most efficient path down the field however doing it this way Actually driving the tractor beyond the row of oh, I think that's the right row. Oh. Um, the cedar is lowered. And so doing alternate rows down the field and then alternate rows back means I cover the field completely. It's not a big deal because this is a contract, however. We just have to keep going until we're done. And, uh, you know, you're not taking your time to turn around. It's forward and back, forward and back, blah, blah, blah. And because this is a trailed cedar, it's not hitched to the... Uh, directly to the, the tractor like the three-point cedars are. Um, it can be annoying to maneuver it at the edge of a field. Anyway, we just need to get this done. So the alternate to this one, and I was looking at it, it's a little bit expensive. But there's the double, which they run front to back, but there's a side hitch that pulls them into uh, parallel working. So it gives you a double width on the, on the working. Is an alternate. There's a Kubota one that is wheel weight. I think that is a direct drill. That was a direct drill and barely in range of our tractor. But I might get that one eventually. I did buy the Borgolt um, equipment pack in. Did I buy it in 17? can't remember if it was a 17 or a 19 thing. And I can't remember whether I bought it or not. I think I bought it and never ever used it because I don't typically do fields that need 
big equipment and most of the equipment in that pack was huge field equipment. You know, generally if it's over 12 meters it's it's too big for the farm. And the other thing to be concerned with is um, your horsepower. Um, typically I'm looking at my biggest tractors round about 400 horsepower. So whatever I buy has to work inside of that because of the hilly nature of the fields on most of the maps I've played. Um, you're not going to get away with um, a three, you know, 350 horsepower uh, cedar on a 400 horsepower tractor. It's too big for the ground, uh, gravity and all that stuff. Yeah, Diz. Deers are a novelty that quickly wears off. It's kind of like the birds as well. Yeah. Yes, it makes it feel a little bit more realistic, but really it's, it's a novelty that... And also with the deers is... Yeah, there may be a flock of deers over there, but we're not going to see them until we get close, and then they spawn one at a time as they take off running is not entirely it doesn't give the the realism immersion so i can get this cedar around on alternate rows now some sometimes you know, depending on your size of tractor and what have you, um, Class Arian 900 series, if you're running anything under 9 meters, you're actually going to do every third row, not every second row, just because of its turn capabilities. You get up to 16 meters and you can do every row working your way down the field. And that's really because of, um, yeah. At that point, your limiting factor is your the size of your tractor. This tractor's medium. It's it's not, and this cedar is is kind of not ideal because of the tow hitch. It's quite long, and so that can cause issues with getting an easy turnaround. But anyway, 107. I did check the store and I can't remember. Oh, there was that big trailer and then a bunch of stuff we really don't care about. I think, again, if I didn't have the tele truck, that skid steer would be a strong contender for. I don't need it right this minute, but it would be really handy to have on the farm. So, um, you know, that's, and the added dust mod, that is kind of cool. You can alter the level of dust with the mod that I'm running, um, and basically make the tractor disappear in a brown cloud of dust that looks like the cavalry's coming. But, uh, little bit more dust, little bit more crap coming from the, uh, the exhaust pipe on the tractor. And we should get to see the more, uh, the closer we get to needing a service, the darker and more thick that, that smoke plume will, will become. 
At least that's what the mod said. So we'll we'll go with that. Can the car move the grass yielder thingy? Or do you have to have a three point hitch? Doing that one. Details on. We are. Uh, I don't know. Oops. I haven't been paying attention, so I don't know how far along the contract we are. Obviously, we're nowhere near halfway, since halfway is when we get to the end. But still, makes a difference from uh, bailing and harvesting. And I've done bailing and harvesting contracts tend to be the the best yielding for income. However, it can get a little bit tedious doing them all the time. When it comes to straight just doing a ton of contracts, I think fertilizing contracts are the contracts that can be done in the shortest time. Because your operating speed and width are so high for the capabilities of equipment you're running. It's like, yeah, you can knock out three or four in the matter of half an hour whereas other contracts do take a longer time. So for, for the long time contracts, I tend to figure that um, harvesting and baling contracts yield the most money, especially since when you factor in the bonus income that you get for exceeding production of the requirement. It's one of the reasons why we have so much money. Oh, there we're halfway already. Um, if we look at money, well, I've also paid down part of the loan. Uh, but September, I made 67000 selling the bales and 51000 on contract income. So I made more on a bonus yield of the bales than I did on... Uh, Um, actually doing the contracts, but as I said, I did five. They were about ten thousand ish each, and it gives me enough money to run with for the for the uh, weekend. Now this weekend is Labor Day, so there will be a stream on Monday morning. Um, apologies to any European people who don't have Labor Day. Um, but I do put all of my videos out on YouTube in half hour chunks. Um, so you will be able to um, watch anything that you miss on Monday. Um, my release schedule is two, two half hour chunks a day. Um, so we're currently at two and a half hours, so that's five videos are going to be produced up to this point. And um, I will 
be um, so today's episode the first two videos drop nine o'clock tomorrow morning the rest drop two per day until I run out at six o'clock in the morning so Monday six o'clock in the morning there will be two more um, once we run out of videos from today that's when the Monday videos will drop the YouTube channel is Osa um, you will probably find more um, or better hit rate by looking at the title of this which is FS22 dash Maple Farm dash episode 15 obviously tomorrow and Mondays will be 16 um, in order to find the channel and then I suggest you follow it because um, as I said OSA doesn't flag up it as a top thing on YouTube and it, I think one of the reasons is I don't really produce YouTube videos because it, you know, you need to spend time producing. It's really just uh, here's the streams I did, and I can go back and see where we started and and how I've done things, um, which is mostly what I use it for. But it does mean that if someone comes in in the middle of a series, if you're interested in how we got this all started you can go back and watch episode one or the the six parts of episode one or however many parts there were typically I run three hours three hour streams um, sometimes more um, I think the last couple of weeks we've done four hours so that's eight videos and that takes you Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday that takes you through to at least in part Wednesday Where are you going, dude? Uh, oh. Yes, those of you who do do GPS, if your steering wheel is turned, then uh, it disengages GPS. So in that case, I was at full lock to the right. I tried to engage GPS and it said, yeah, you too much steering wheel input, I'm not going to override it. And if you are watching on Twitch itself and can see description of the channel underneath the video feed, you'll find a link to my YouTube channel, which is probably easier to find than uh, searching for it on YouTube. Straighten it out. So yeah, this is po quite possibly a field we will expand into. It's covered in rocks, so I'm going to have to do something about that. They may be small rocks, so we might be able to get away with a roller on that. But since rollers are forty thousand. Or at least the in-game rollers are about 40,000. It's not something I consider of vital importance to the farm at this point. So that's part of the thing I was saying. It's sort of, you know, oh, I need a cultivator. Yes, I do. Um, if, I'm, if, if I don't have a direct seeder, I absolutely need a cultivator. Or if I'm planting, I absolutely need a cultivator. So I'm going to buy one. I don't absolutely need a mulcher. We don't absolutely need um, uh, what else is there? A roller. And I'm not even going to bother renting them to boost my yield at this point because I'm not sure I can make up the difference. So it's sort of, yes, it's nice to buy all the equipment, but does buying all the equipment make a difference to my yield? And if it doesn't, then maybe I should just not worry about getting it now. Maybe look for it in a sale. And uh, 
see where the farm goes from there. So eventually we'll have field rollers, we'll have we'll have bean vulture, probably. I'll have a spreader, I'll have a sprayer. Um, but for now, I've got a sprayer and that can do the fertilizer. So I don't need a spreader except for lime. And I don't need to do lime every year. So maybe it just um, skip the lime for now or skip owning a spreader for now and get one later when uh, when it comes up on the sale or something like that but rent one in the meantime because it's not an everyday use piece of equipment I generally I I would not rent a tractor because it's an everyday piece of equipment um, I would not generally rent a tipper because it's an everyday piece of equipment plus with tippers because you can um, uh, because you can um, configure them sometimes it's just better to own it so you can configure it because you can't reconfigure leased equipment so with tractors you lease a tractor oh I need narrow tires well you can't do it on your tractor if you didn't lease it with them on there so now you need another tractor for narrow tires and um, yeah it's just easier that way with with a cedar you could get away with leasing one basically because the cedar you're only using it potentially once per year when you're seeding our farm doesn't own a harvester at the moment because I need it for one month. So I might as well lease a, lease a harvester, do my harvesting, and then give it back because it's not sitting in the shed for an entire year and tying up 150,000, 200,000 pounds of uh, equipment. But when something comes up on a sale, if harvest comes up on a sale, I'm looking at it and saying, Ooh, what do I need to what do I need to do to make that thing happen? <coughs> but then if a potato harvester comes up or a sugar beet harvester comes up, probably not going to be interested in it. I think a potato harvester did come up, but yeah, we're not a potato farm. Could be. But at the moment we're not, so not a thing I'm looking for. And then mulchers, you know, I, I could lease a mulcher, but I'm not entirely convinced a mulcher is going to increase the yields on my crop sufficiently to cover the cost of leasing it. I tend to go sprayer first. Um, and the reason for that is because because of the amount of lime that you need or that you end up using I tend to look at fertilizer spreaders this is my lime spreader um, now I do believe this now has narrow tires in 19 this did not have a narrow tire option so I had one of these to just spread lime and eventually I got one of these or maybe one of them, something like that, to uh, to spread fertilizer because the the smaller lime the the smaller breedle had narrow tires, so I could use it on a, a crop established field with um, crop destruction on. But um, the large one, you would be hauling over crop and damaging it. Now that it's got a narrow tire option, I could go with that and just, you know, just be happy. It's a matter of interest, 78,000, yeah, 45,000. So something like this is affordable, but it doesn't do lime, so it's not a multi-use. If I look to sprayers, all of the sprayers do fertilizer and um, 
herbicide. So if I'm looking at that as an option, uh, a fertilizer as a starting piece of equipment, I think is far more useful than a spreader. Because the spreaders I can afford for cheap don't carry lime. The Kubota one does. Um, but generally, you can't get a small lime spreader on the back of your tractor. You can only get the trailed ones, and they're expensive. So it's uh, it's really, for me, that's a financial choice. Um, I can afford one type of fertilizer. I'll do... I'll do Whatever it is. Uh, how long have we been on? We started broadcasting 9 o'clock my time this morning. It's now 11.40. So we've been live now for 2 hours 40 minutes. Um, definitely get this contract done. Because obviously we want payment. Then I will run back to the farm. You can see that this cedar is probably a little bit wider than the auto width setting. Um, or its effective width is, is wider than um, what the, uh, the game says it is. Because it seems like these these rows I'm coming back along. The dirt on either side of the row that I'm planting is, is encroaching between the lines. Um, but if I jump out and you look at how wide this thing is. So we've got bias to the left on the back, bias to the right on the front. That front wheel is a little bit further out. But I think, it, if I'm lined up on that wheel, I think it's actually planting a little bit further out. So its working width is wider than is stated. <coughs> 